Greetings from Gainesville, Florida. I'm James Bates. There's a new restaurant in town. It's called Spurrier's Gridiron Grill, a tribute to a coach that I used to play for. It's cool inside. I want to show it to you. Come on, we might even run into the head ball coach. Let's go. James Bates open, take 44. Hey, I'm the one they call James Bates, but my real name is Bates. I was a co-captain and all-SEC linebacker on the Florida Gator National Championship football team. Number 44, James Bates. These days, I'm a family guy, a broadcaster. With James Bates. And an artist, you know, like portraits and stuff. Kind of like the title of this show, Portraits, where we feature some of the more colorful characters in all the world of sports. Enjoy. It's a, it's a pull. I thought it was a push. Oh, my gosh. Plus, I'm really excited. Oh, my gosh. This place is awesome. I can't wait to show it to you. Plus, I can't wait to introduce you to the head ball coach. But first things first, come on. Let's take a trip upstairs. I'll show you why. You wanted portraits? You got portraits. How about this room? The champion's room here at Spurrier's. The 18 University of Florida head coaches to have won national titles and this was a commission that I did for the restaurant. I'm so proud of it. Look at all these pieces. Billy Donovan, he won two national championships while at Florida. Roland Thornquist, Becky Burley, and the head ball coach, Steve Spurrier. 1996 is when he won his title. Or should I say, we won our title, right, coach? When I first heard that, that Steve Spurrier's Gridiron Grill was going to be here in Gainesville, I was excited, and I, and I couldn't wait to see it. But coach, this blows my mind. I, I, I mean, congratulations. Yeah, we're proud of it, definitely. When I moved back to town in 2016, uh, after South Carolina, I thought I might be living at the beach and I'd build a house over there. But uh, uh, University of Florida put my name on the stadium, uh, Steve Spurrier, Florida Field. This facility here was available to put a restaurant in. It's, it's done very well thus far. Everything's thus far, as you know. Uh, excellent uh, workers, servers. Our chef here is really good. Food is tasty. Jerry, Jerry's cookies. That's a pretty yeah. good one. Yeah, people really like those. Uh, as you know, my wife made cookies for the players on their birthday. And uh, the players had to sort of lock them up because other guys come by and grab one if you didn't watch it. But uh, those are very tasty Toll House cookies. Oh, I, I've got I've got great memories of, of walking in there when it's your birthday month. Yep, yep. Uh, Miss Jerry would always bake those cookies, and if it was your month and you saw that foil wrapped in aluminum mm -hmm. foil, big old cinder block size almost, oh, it was a good day when you're getting those cookies. Those are really tasty, and I've actually had them here at the restaurant. It's a uh, takes very me good. back. It's really yeah, nice. Very good. Florida running out of the no huddle. This is their second play from scrimmage, and it is a touchdown. Weedell Anthony. When you think back about the Florida Gators in 1996, what are some things that really stand out to you? Well, James, as you know, we were coming off of that 12 and one year uh, where we won all the SEC games and uh, won a championship game, we got clobbered by Nebraska. So we were 12 and one that year and uh, just had one really, really lousy game. And we had, had a lot of the guys back, but we did have some seniors on that 95 team and we wanted to win every game, yeah. and. Uh, we lost at FSU 24-21, last one of the year. This is Warwick Dunn, peered in the stack, but he just kept on pumping. He's got it. Peter Warwick, Steve Spurrier, and these Florida Gators playing for the Southeastern Conference Championship must try to forget their bruises, pump up their pride, and march on Atlanta. Tennessee Before we went to FSU, we had to get through going to Knoxville. And, and back then, as you well know, that was the game. And whoever won that game was in the driver's seat to win the SEC. And, and up in Knoxville, they finally thought they were going to get the Gators. They had Peyton, and they were excited. And, and it, was a, it was great to go up there. But uh, just your thoughts of, of going up there and, and pulling off that win was a, was a special win. Well, it was a special win when you look back. Uh, you know, we jumped ahead 35 to nothing in the second quarter. 
but we yeah, we got some good turnovers and we scored uh, quickly. And uh, I think you got a turnover, sacked Peyton, knocked the ball out. A lot of good things happened and we held on and beat them. And it was interesting, one of the writers up there, because it was supposed to be the biggest game ever, big game, big crowd. His headline was, big game, big crowd, no big deal to Gators. Because we weren't celebrating. We were just, eh, hey, we held on and beat them. Uh, but we didn't celebrate uh, until we won the national championship because that was our ultimate goal, and it, and it worked out for us. Well, it took some help. You mentioned that Florida State game. We needed a little bit of help, and, 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 and we sure got it. Five games had to go our way after we lost because we were behind uh, four teams, and uh, they had to go our way. First of all, Michigan had to beat Ohio State because they had no losses, and then they had one, and then they knocked off uh, Arizona State, and then Texas uh, beat uh, Nebraska because they were ranked ahead of us. So that let, all we had to do was beat Alabama and FSU, <laughs> two of the best teams in the country, and, and it worked out for us. Yeah, we really played well those last two. You played there and won a lot of games as a player, and, and to come back and, and to be welcomed back, I mean, just what, what a magical time it felt like. We won SEC after SEC after SEC, but to take that next step and to bring the Florida Gators their first national championship, what did that mean to you? We played for two nationals, won one, lost one, and uh, so I'm happy with that. Uh, but anyway, yeah, it, it, it is neat to have a national championship. And what's interesting about it, we are the last team that won it for the first time. In other words, every team that's won it from 97 on has been a repeat winner. No school has won it for the first time since the Gators in 96. The wins, it's, 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 it's fun to be a part of a winner. It's fun to win games. But, but it was also a, a special group of, of friends, of, of the bond. That was a, that was a close-knit team. It was a, a bunch of friends as coaches and players that, that, that we had a pretty special bond, I feel like, don't you? Coaches have to, you know, give them a good plan, but, but you have to have that leadership within the team. And uh, you guys, we had so many guys played together for four years. Uh, we didn't have transfer portals or guys opting out. That wasn't even heard of back in our day. So. Uh, when you got that kind of leadership and you get each other going, and of course Danny Waffle, the quarterback, we all know the importance of a quarterback. Uh, it just it spreads through the team, and, and you and several of the guys on defense. Uh, we had leadership that we were ready to play every game. There was no goofing off and this, that, and the other. Uh, guys were ready to play. So uh, yeah, that, that was a good era of Florida football. But afterwards, after we did finish it off and. In, in great style there on Bourbon Street in the, in the Superdome in New Orleans to win the national championship 52 to 20. One of my favorite head ball coach lines is, I guess God smiled down upon the Gators. We would always have a bye week before we played Tennessee. In 96, he had all the coaches take their wives and go to Crescent Beach. And Coach Stoops, uh, he says that Coach Spurrier said to him on that bye week, getting ready for Tennessee, hey Stoopsy, Think those Tennessee coaches are out floating in the ocean right now? You know, and darn well they weren't. They were trying to find a way to beat Spurrier, finally beat the Gators, but they didn't. Coming up next on Portraits, I'll take you back to my studio so you can see how these portraits come to life. And we'll talk about Coach Spurrier's playing days. Ah, check this out, the HBC, but not the head ball coach, the head beer coach. And look at these bears. This is a lager, 1966 in 52-20. You know what that's about, right? Yeah, you do. The final score, our rematch in the Sugar Bowl 1996 to beat the Florida State Seminoles and win the national championship. I want to try this one. Ah, mm, tastes like victory. So this, this is my studio here in Gainesville, Florida. And it's a, uh, it's a bonus room above my garage. My paintings are like a, like a, a great big mix of, of, of everything that I, I've always kind of liked about art. This is kind of nice, actually. I haven't painted in a while. I don't, I don't get too wrapped up in, in, in every little detail and this is in studying a, a picture of someone and this is exactly how how they look and i want it to be as realistic as 
as possible and it's it's got to look just like them I, I try to like peek at someone peek at someone okay what are some things I want to emphasize and then I just go and I and I try to make it my style and, and my flow uh, on the canvas Coach Spurrier and I have always had a really interesting relationship. I don't think he's into laughing as much as I am, and I don't think he's into art as much as I am, and those are a couple of my favorite things. But like, um, he's he's seen my art uh, quite a bit, and he'll every now and then he'll he'll say, ah, that, that doesn't look like me, Batesy. My my hair isn't that dark. Everything that I have, pretty much. It's thanks in large part to being a Florida Gator and Steve Spurrier made that happen. There are a lot more differences than similarities between me and the head ball coach, but it all started with the fact that we're both from East Tennessee. Here on the, the Spurrier's Gridiron Grill menu, a, a lot of interesting titles to some of these entrees and under sandwiches, the Johnson City Tomato Grilled Cheese Sandwich. How about that? Tell us about that, please. Well, uh, Freddie Weeby, general manager of a restaurant here, said, did, uh, what did your mom make you for lunch most days? And I said, we just had a tomato sandwich with a little mayonnaise on it and so forth. So we, we came up with the, the Johnson City tomato sandwich there. Do they, they grow uh, good to make good tasting tomatoes up in Johnson City? Oh yeah, we had a little garden right there. My, da my dad is a preacher. He, he had a garden out there. We had to go pick beans and things like that, pick tomatoes uh, one or two days uh, a week before we could go down at, to the park and play ball. And he coached Little League Baseball and uh, occasionally a Babe Ruth League team also when we moved to Johnson City. Uh, but he sort of emphasized if you're keeping score, you're supposed to try your best to win. I didn't study art, but I, I just know what feels right when I'm when I'm painting people or when I'm painting objects, what feels right to me. And try to bring out their personality a little bit. You know, maybe a portrait is just is, is storytelling with a, a camera or a paintbrush. It's you know, it's 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 capturing them. I wasn't too impressed with him when I first saw him because He's a big, tall, gawky kid, and his movements were well, like a young cold or something. You know, he just, he didn't have much agility at that time. And then, uh, but you could see there was some promise there, the way he handled the ball and the way he handled himself. Most of uh, my buddies said, uh, baseball is your best sport. You shouldn't even play football in high school. Uh, in junior high, I think I played fullback and linebacker. I could punt and place kick a little bit, so I was sort of a kicking specialist, I guess you call it. And I just kept staying out for the team. And uh, and then in high school, I got a little taller, a little quicker, and our coach put in some pass plays. I mean, coach, look at that. You dropped that one in there. That's, that's yeah. a nice little touch on that ball. Who's, who's that receiver? Do you remember? Uh, it's probably Jimmy Sanders. Jimmy got a scholarship to Vanderbilt, a successful lawyer there in town. I did drop kick that thing. I missed a toe. <laughs> yeah. How about the presence of mind, though? Young Steve Spurrier. I mean, like most guys would, <laughs> would panic and try to go oh, run I, it in. I used to drop kick uh, in practice all the time, anyway. Yeah. So, anyway, we had a bowl game. A bowl game? They didn't have playoffs back then. It was called the Exchange Bowl. Uh, and uh, we got behind 21 to nothing. And our coach, uh, Tipton, uh, he let me call the plays. He, he said, you can throw every down if you want to. And the poise, he, of course, he's always, he, as long as I've known him, he had poise in everything that he did. He just gave the impression that he knew exactly what he was doing. So we started throwing every down, and I ended up throwing four touchdown passes, and we beat him 28-21. And so that four touchdown passes back then is like a guy throwing eight today, probably, because high school is still all over the place now. So I guess I got a lot of publicity out of some kid threw for four touchdowns and 250 yards or something. And, uh, and that game probably helped get a whole bunch of scholarship offers and Florida started recruiting me. One of the coaches down here, assistant coach, he said, Steve, you know, all those people up north are trying to save their money. So someday they can move to Florida. He said, you can come here right away. 
And if you do pretty well, you can live in Florida. <laughs> and that's what you and I both did. <laughs> yes, We sir. did well enough to live here. Uh -huh. and, uh, and so that's, that's the way it worked out. That, yeah. was, that was one of the big hook that's lines I told on you. me. Yeah. You got all these people saving up their whole yeah. life, trying to turn 60 and move to Florida, and you can come now and you're 18. Yeah. Sign me up. Sign me up. Yeah. There it is. Look at that number 11. Oh, wow. That means so much to Florida Gator fans. No, it means so much to college football fans, really. That number 11, look at that old throwback helmet that Coach Spurrier wore. They actually wear those helmets the Florida Gators do now, and they look pretty good in those throwback unis. And oh my word, look at that. There is the shoe from the kick. Coach Spurrier, of course, won a Heisman Trophy not only for all the touchdown passes that he threw, but in 1966, he put on that shoe. He zipped it up. He didn't tie it up because he had to had to be fast going from quarterback to kicker. Fourth and 14 at home coming with seconds left. Time is out and Heisman winner Steve Spurrier will attempt a 40 yard field goal something he has never accomplished before. Hold your breath. The ball is towed and is on target. Steve has done it again. A 40-yard field goal to give Florida their seventh straight victory. And that sealed the deal. And that's his Heisman Trophy, 1966. And that, my friends, is pretty cool. Did you know that only four people have ever been inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame as a player and as a coach? And, of course, Steve Spurrier is one of them. Bet you didn't know that. Now you do. The man motioning, Whirlpool over the top, and he's a touchdown! Oh, there's Danny's Heisman. All right, Danny, my man, shoot! 1996, national champions and a Heisman Trophy winner. That was a pretty good year for the Florida Gators. I know, because I was part of that team. That's my freshman brother right there. Hey, when we come back on the show, it's the only Heisman Trophy winner to coach a Heisman Trophy winner. Stay right there. the portraits if you watched college football in the 90s you saw the Gators you knew about the Gators you know whether you, you liked it or not what did Ric Flair say you better learn to love it because it's the best thing going today Wordful for Anthony touchdown Gators W U E R F F E L. I never can remember that. It's a tough one to spell, but they got it right on his Heisman Trophy. They better. There's Doring's Florida Georgia Hall of Fame bus, the Davy O'Brien Award. That's pretty cool. Oh, speaking of cool, there's your boy Batesy. Wow, you look good today, James. Shane Matthews. Shane Matthews was so far back on the depth chart when Coach Spurrier took over as the head coach of the Florida Gators. Nobody had heard of him. We've all heard of Shane Matthews now, and there are a lot of other big names that coaches coach over the years. Randy Pittman. He cannot escape. Kevin Carter's got him. Workful lofts it again. Hilliard touchdown. Davion Clowney, his fourth sack of the night. And into the end zone, Taylor. Deep for Hines. He might have another one. Touchdown, Duke. Of course, the guys out there on the field, as they say, not just the X's and O's, but the Jesse's and Joe's. And you've had some pretty good Jesse's and some pretty good Joe's over the years. Uh, you've been very fortunate there. Danny Warfel, who you mentioned, being one of them. Um, just talk about some of your favorite players over the years, if you would, please. Oh, got too many to name them all, James. Uh, obviously, you got to have good players and, and coaches. Uh, but, but you got to have that team com camaraderie, team morale. Uh, everybody's got to love each other, play for each other, and so forth. And uh, we, we tried to build that, as you know, uh, within our team. And, uh, and, and just about every team we, we've had had really guys that uh, wanted to win for yourself and your teammates and your coaches, and then also for their university and their school also. You know, it, you've, you've been surrounded by some some great coaches you uh, obviously have won a lot of games and and it takes it, it, it takes from top to bottom the uh, the whole organization i will say i was very fortunate uh doug dickey hired me to start with and then he got let go fired and pepper rogers hired me at georgia tech 
and he got fired. And I was basically out in uh, Duke University. I'd met the head coach during spring recruiting, and they were looking for an offensive coordinator, and, and he hired me. And that's the biggest break of my life right there. So uh, I got on to be an assistant coach at Duke and then got to be head coach with the Tampa Bay Bandits. Uh, I was 37. There was three other guys 37, and one of them was your dad that was a head coach at that time in pro football. But, but the other guys were never a head coach again. And somehow or another, I got 31 years in, so I, I know how fortunate I was in the coaching profession. Well, you mentioned Duke along that run, all those, all those steps. All these honors in here, I mean, the, the, the fact that, that you were an ACC champion, you guys won a championship there in Durham, North Carolina with the Duke Blue Devils, that's, that's got to be one of your proudest achievements as a coach, is it? I guess it is. Uh, Duke's won one since 1962. But, you, you know, you talk about players and camaraderie and teamwork and all that kind of stuff, and we did. We did have it uh, those, uh, those Duke years. And I was there six years in the 80s, three as an assistant, uh, three as a head coach. And, uh, and I, I mean, I owe my coaching career to Duke University and some guys that hired me to, to go up there and coach and the players up there. The 89 team uh, won the ACC championship, and uh, that's what got me the Florida job. They weren't gonna hire me. Uh, a, a Gator buddy of mine called up during the season, and they'd already fired Galen Hall, and he said, Steve, can you go uh, seven and four, or six and five or something? Because we were one and three at the time. And I said, listen, I'm not worried about the Florida job. I'm worried about these guys right here, the Duke guys. Now, we were one in three before we had the upset over Clemson. I mean, we had a rah-rah meeting, and things happened in that game. It was unbelievable. We found a running back that the other guys couldn't tackle, Randy Cutler. So we got on a run, and uh, we won six straight conference games and, and won the ACC. That was, uh, that was a memory that uh, we all share up there, and uh, I got the Florida job. Portraits will be right back. All right, there's the head ball coach right there. Got his nice visor, his orange visor, and notice that the artist got that shade of orange right. That's not Tennessee orange, that's gator orange. What was the University of Florida football program, the, the swamp, what was the state of the program when you first came back to town in 1990? A friend of mine asked me the other day, a coach, young coach, he said, when did you know you really had it going at Florida? I said, the day I got hired. Now, let me tell you why. Florida, the year before, was number three in the nation in total defense and returned eight starters. Eight starters, they were all there. Huey Richardson, Mark Murray, Jerry Odom, uh, Paul Godfrey Miles. Fee Bart would have been there. Oh, yeah, Fee was outside backer. I mean, we had ball players all over the place, and they could really play. And we had about uh, four or five offensive linemen coming back. Big guys, strong guys. Uh, Emmett Smith was here, but Eric Rett was here also. Eric was already here, and it was the right thing for Emmett to go pro, which he did. And uh, I mean, we, we had ball players, we had receivers, and everybody said, who's gonna play quarterback? And I said, whoever he is, he's gonna be dang good. You wait and see, because every, every guy around him's good. And then Shane Matthews was here. Uh, he didn't take a snap, I don't think, the year before. We went out on the practice field. He started out number five. He was fifth. Second and ten, Matthews with time. He's flushed out of there. On the run, he drills it! Touchdown, Harrison Houston! And he worked his way into the starter, and he was the SEC Player of the Year two years in a row. So the ball players were here. We just had to mentally say, we can, we can beat all these guys. We're good enough. That there's no excuses anymore. And the guys really wanted to do it also. So good players with good attitudes uh, and just somebody telling them, you're good enough to win it. Now let's go do it. Florida running out of a no huddle. This is their second play from scrimmage and it is a touchdown. Big time play. What an effort. Man. That was incredible. Just perfect. Oh, wonderful. Touchdown. Option Williams, it's open. Touchdown, Florida. Big offense, big play. Touchdown, Florida! Just playing awesome. 
after I coached here, I went to the NFL a couple of years. I didn't go the right place, but uh, after two years, I knew that wasn't gonna work. And uh, so a year later, I got a chance to go to South Carolina. The old ball coach wearing some different colors this year. Steve Spurrier, you could probably say he's ready to get this one underway to face the new ball coach down in Gainesville, Florida, Urban Meyer. It has been the talk of college football. Florida had hired Urban Meyer, so my only offer was South Carolina. So uh, we went up there and coached a bit and uh, did some good things. Uh, we'd never won an SEC. I thought maybe we could sneak in there and win one. And, I, and we really had the teams capable. Touchdown, South Carolina, Davis Turbin. Andre Ellen, oh, oh, was he met? So they pick up the pressure to the end zone, he goes. And that ball is caught for a touchdown. We finished in the top 10 three straight years, won 11 games three straight years. Uh, but we, we lost the one game that prevented us from winning an SEC. Coming back to the swamp and, uh, and, and winning one in the swamp, uh, wearing that South Carolina uniform and coaching that team, what was that like for you? Well, we won two down here, two out of five, and won three out of five, I think in, in uh, Columbia, so I, I tied with the Gators, 50-50. <laughs> and uh, so anyway, that's, that's okay. That was, that was a rough game for me uh, as a yeah. Gator. I, I love my Gators, but I love the head ball coach well, too. And so in I, 2010, Eric Rett was down there on the field giving me a hug, and I said, you better not let anybody yeah. see you, man. He said, oh, no, you're my coach. You're yeah. my coach, coach. Yeah. And it almost brought me to tears when he said that. Pretty cool stuff, right? How about this? A nice collection of Coach Spurrier's favorite lids from over the years. There's a Science Hill football visor where he played his high school ball. Oh, that's a cool Duke hat. And look at this, the iconic gator visor that he made so popular. You like visors? Whoa, stick around. When we come back, we're going to go upstairs to Visor's rooftop bar. Well, the visor, it's, I mean, the visor, the visor, the visor with him. These are uh, the big ones. And I always gotta, gotta paint that big visor on them. That's, that's where I always have to start. Well, Steve Spurrier was the first visor wearing college football coach. That was it, big fat visor, not the little peewee visors like, like your mom wears to the beach, like some of those coaches wear now. That right there, was not only Steve Spurrier, but that was Gator football. Let's head upstairs. When you think of the head ball coach Steve Spurrier, you think of a visor on top, right? So it's only fitting that when you think of Spurrier's gridiron grill, there's a visor rooftop bar on top of the restaurant. This place is really cool. Come on, you're gonna like it. All right, I hope you like visors because we got rows and rows of them. I'm going crazy, slashing prices in half. <laughs> wow, that's my favorite right there, the head ball coach. When I see that, that's who I think of. Ah, but don't take it from me. Take it from the head ball coach. his troops, the man with the visor. He hopes to not take it off that often today. When, it, when he rips that visor off, he's generally not in a good mood. Yeah, he's generally slapping it on his knee. You also brought the visor to college football, and, and that's an accessory that still to this day is that you see it a lot on the sidelines of, of coaches honoring you. There's nobody much wore visors. Okay. Uh, Florida did not have a visor when I came down here okay. uh, to go out to practice. In fact, uh, Bud Fernandez, our equipment guy, he gave us all a T-shirt, and I guess a ball cap, if you want to wear a ball cap. And uh, I said, Bud, do you, do you have a shirt with a collar on it? I'm used to wearing, a sh you know, I don't want sun all over my neck and so forth. And he, he, he thought I was some fancy dude wanting a collar shirt to go to football practice. And then I said, well, if you don't have any visors, I'll bring some of my golf visors. So I wore a golf visor out there in 90 and 91. I guess I was the first in SEC, but I actually wore one occasionally up at Duke. Occasionally. Uh, my last year there, I wore a hat because I wore a hat 
on a rainy day when we beat Clemson. And I said, I'm gonna wear this hat till we lose. And we didn't lose again. Visors are all over the country. Yeah, I appreciate those guys wearing them. Uh, at one time, some guys said, well, I don't want to copy Spurrier down there and so forth. But uh, a lot of guys, uh, you know, that have hair, uh, say, yeah, I'm gonna wear a visor. It is a lot cooler, I'm gonna tell you. I, I, I don't like wearing hats on a 90 degree day. Doesn't make sense. If you got hair, you gotta have some hair though. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Cover it up. You gotta have some hair. Oh yes, the familiar custom. Well, uh, maybe I'll just hold on to it this time, but the next time, I'm gonna release it all the way. Shoot! You remember how Coach, when he'd get mad, he would throw his visor? Oh, ho, 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 ho. you didn't want any of that. Not me. I'm not throwing the visor. I'm going to respect it. And isn't it cool how many coaches across the college football landscape show respect to Steve Spurrier by still wearing the visor on Saturdays? Yeah, that's pretty neat. Kind of like Spurrier's visor's rooftop bar. Great place to be. You know, Coach used to always tell us, you can drink a few beers and be a gator, but you can't smoke pot. All right, Coach, don't mind if I do. Thank you very much. This is the coolest wallpaper I've ever seen. You know, when I was little, I had some pretty cool NFL wallpaper in my room, but this takes the cake. Steve Spurrier's all-time favorite ball plays as wallpaper. Look, 2010 when he was at South Carolina and they beat Bama, Marcus Lattimore from Steven Garcia. Oh, there's my old roommate, Eric Kresser, to Jack Jackson at Florida when we beat Southern Miss back in 1994. But this right here, that's my favorite Florida play of all time. 1996 in Neyland Stadium when we beat Tennessee, fourth and 12 on the opening drive, Danny hitting Reed the Hill. Wow. Oh. This place is awesome. Welcome back to Portraits. I'm James Bates. He's such a confident guy. So I, you know, a lot of his quotes, he'll, you know, some things he, like one of them used to always say is, let them boo you. If they don't boo you, they don't respect you. Let them boo you. You know, it's like, so like they're right here. I'm like, we're number one and they're booing them. You know, like that is who Coach Spurrier is. He is, he is a feisty fighter and will find a way to scrap and win whatever, whatever's on the line. And I just feel uh, lucky to have been on his teams and not on the other side of the field. Going into a victorious Florida Gator locker room after a hard fought battle and the head ball coach stands up and awards you a game ball. Batesy, here's a game ball for defense. I've got about four or five of those and that makes me so proud. Coach is very proud of all these game balls. And you notice the ongoing theme here, a lot of them just happen to be the big rivals. Florida State, and he not only loved to beat the rivals, but then give them a jab or two in the press afterwards. The Free Shoes University, remember he used to call FSU that, and you can't spell citrus without UT. Who, who could forget that one? Steve Spurrier took a little poke at the Knowles when after their controversial shopping spree by the part of several players last fall, and Steve referred to it as free shoes you. Well, and you, you love getting the, the upper hand on those rivals, as we know here as Florida Gators, when you, you, you talk about the Tennessee rivalry and the Florida State rivalry, Georgia, Georgia of course, game. was a big one. But, but back then for Duke, it was to beat North Carolina was big, and, and you guys, yeah. uh, uh, you rubbed those Tar Heels wrong, but you, 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 you know, justifiably so out there celebrating on the field, took a picture, and Mac Brown still to this day, they say, is upset about that one. Oh, it didn't have anything to do with uh, North Carolina. It had everything to do with winning the ACC championship. Uh, that year, 89, uh, I, my wife gave me an article about how to set goals and how to achieve them. You know, here's, here's how you do it. So I said, I'm gonna try that this year. So we're setting goals with the seniors and a bunch of the starters, had about 10 or 15 guys in there, and they got together, and I said, you guys come up with some goals you think we can reach this year. So, you know, winning season, uh, go to a bowl game. Hadn't been a bowl game 29 years. Uh, beat North Carolina, in-state rival, that's always a goal. Maybe finish in the top 25, something like that. I said, those are good goals, we'll see what we can do. And our center raised his head, he said, Coach, we think we can win the ACC football championship. And now, the last time they won it was back in 62, which uh, 
uh, it was a long time ago. And uh, I said, your goals have got to be doable, reachable. He said, no, we, we, we got Clemson at home. We got NC State. We think we can do it. I said, all right, I'm writing it down, but don't tell anybody. It's just between us. What a great win for your team and for your program. Well, this is what college football is all about. Not, not only anybody gave us a chance today, nobody believed in it but our players, and that's what counted. It was important to you to play on, on natural grass. Uh, when you were hired, um, and, and that they were already, they were planning on on not doing that. Well, Coach Dickey, when he came in in uh, 1970, I think it was, everybody was going to AstroTurf. Tennessee had turf, everybody had AstroTurf. It's sort of the way to go back then. So they put the turf in, AstroTurf. And uh, the players here really did not like AstroTurf. It's hot, scratchy, your arms up and so forth. Uh, so when I was hired, I asked the AD and uh, uh, President, uh, can we go back to natural grass? And when we went to natural grass, the players, man, this Coach Spurrier is a nice guy. <laughs> man, he actually cares about us. And uh, so it's one of the best things in the world that when a coach does something for player safety, they say, dang, coach cares about us. Uh, they'll play a little harder for you, which, uh, Back in those days, you weren't supposed to drink a lot of water, they said, you know, but yeah, obviously times have changed. And Yeah, you know Dr. Robert Cade, the inventor of Gatorade yeah. at the University of Florida, uh, they didn't have this mountain berry blast and lemon lime and all that, all these great flavors back then, did they? I, uh, from what I hear, it wasn't a very tasty uh, Gatorade flavor. Yeah, back in uh, 64, 65, right in that era, Dr. Robert Cade was inventing this drink uh, eventually called Gatorade, that would replenish uh, the nutrients you lose sweating. Uh, so anyway, we started drinking that stuff uh, out on the practice field, and it didn't taste very good at all originally. And I think one of the players told Dr. Cade, why don't you just pour a little Kool-Aid in it? He said, okay. So he put some Kool-Aid in it, and then we all said, whew, it's okay now, Doc, we can drink this. <laughs> and that, uh, that's what started Gatorade. They would put it in a milk carton, little old milk carton and put it on the bench uh, during the games. And you know, you're free to go over there and get one anytime. The man, <laughs> we played at one o'clock all the time back then. Very seldom did we even have a night game. So uh, I told people, I, gosh, I was tired after warm ups, but you just, you just go through it, you know, because uh, it was some hot, humid days in, in September. The Ben Hanks wearing jersey number 11 yeah. story. Tim, you think about number 11, and that's Ben Hanks. 11's supposed to be a quarterback's number. He plays like a quarterback, but he's on defense. He's all over the place. Senior out of Miami, Ben Hanks is truly the star of this team. He will line up anywhere. Yeah, when I got here, uh, there was only my number and Scott Brantley. And I said, why don't we just unretire both of ours and don't retire numbers anymore if you want to put their jersey up in, on the stadium or something like that. Uh, that way you don't there's no argument, uh, do you retire this guy or that guy? And uh, Scott said, yeah, that's fine with me, coach. You unretiring yours, yeah. So we unretired all of them. And Ben Hanks uh, from uh, Miami, sort of, you know, maybe the project a little bit, uh, not uh, a difficult area. Uh, first of all, he wouldn't let him in school. So I had the uh, provost uh, sort of made the call. I had to go over him to the president, Lombardi, I go, Mr. President, this kid is qualified, and he's a good kid, and uh, he can make it here. We'll get to tutors with him. He'll, he'll, he'll do well here, and we need him to come play here at the University of Florida. So he said, you got him, coach. So we got him in school, and I said, Ben, how would you like to wear number 11? It's out of retirement, you can wear it. He said, sounds good to me. Senior three-year letterman, an all-SEC performer, has been everywhere for the Gators. Yeah, where's number 11? That's an interesting number because that was Steve Spurrier's number. He brought that number out of retirement here at Florida and said, I want to give it to an outstanding player, and Ben Hanks has been everything that you would think he could be. So he wore number 11 all uh, four years and, uh, yeah, played very well for us. Well, you know, it, it's funny, that number 11, and, and Ben, I keep in touch with him to this day. He's, he's a teacher and a coach down at Booker T. Washington back in Miami, yeah. making a difference in, in a lot of kids' yeah. lives. Uh, another guy that wore number 11 right after him, Thad Bullard, certainly makes a difference yeah. in so many people's lives. What is it like, the, the Danny Warfels of the world, the Thad Bullards, uh, to, to help 
grow up and, and these guys go on not only to be successful football players, but great husbands and, and fathers and, and being such important role models in society. It's got to be a good feeling as their coach. Well, you hope. Yeah, you hope all your guys uh, do something to, to help others in their path in life and so forth. I tell you, we got a lot of guys that went into coaching. Uh, a lot of high school coaches in the area here uh, that played uh, for us at Florida during the 90s. But uh, yeah, as long as you, you know, uh, John Wooden one time said, you can't have a perfect day in life unless you do something for somebody that can never pay you back. So help those that need help is something we all need to do uh, as much as we can. On my recruiting trip, I had never been on the field at that point. I had never seen a game in the swamp in person, which is probably kind of rare in this day and age uh, where you end up going to school that you had never seen a game. Uh, when you're on your recruiting trip and you commit, the first game I ever saw in the swamp live was when I played in. The coach said to us, he said, yeah, LSU and, and Clemson, they, they've got nicknames for their stadiums like Death Valley. And we're thinking about uh, giving this place a nickname. We're going to call it the swamp. Still a swamp to this day. And there he is, Steve Spurrier Field. Hut, hut, hut. I always find myself kind of painting head ball coach stories quite a bit and and people like to that's that's what a lot of my commissions end up being or, or coach Spurrier uh, head ball coach stories and you know I did a lot of a lot of art up there at his place and so proud of that I mean Spurrier's gridiron grill at first when they said they were doing it, I thought oh that'll be neat it'll be like a head ball coach cracker barrel but it's it's one of the nicest restaurants I've ever been in and, and it, it really is like a head ball coach museum. My daughter said, Dad, you need a restaurant to put all these trophies and memorabilia and the coach of the years and this, that, and the other. And then Danny Wolf was loaned us his uh, trophies. We got your Florida Georgia Hall of Fame uh, plaque in here. So all the guys that played for me uh, have been very uh, happy to loan their trophies and stuff here. Uh, so anyway, that's, uh, uh, that's where it started. Great energy and, and, yep. and a, a, a great uh, mm -hmm. a museum, if you will. Thank you for bringing such an amazing place to a place where I still live and I love Gainesville, Florida. This makes Gainesville, Florida better. Inside the Huddle is on the air. Former Gators QB Shane Matthews and the Dean of Sports Talk Steve Russell and Hall of Famer Steve Spurrier are mic'd up and ready to break the huddle. You asked for it, you got it. Am I on? Am I? I've never done a podcast before. But you know what? Spurrier's Gridiron Grill, they're not new to this. 15 a week, they do right here at Spurrier's Gridiron Grill. Coach was just in here earlier with Shane Matthews and Steve Russell. All kinds of activity here at Spurrier's. I remember the, the dry erase boards in our meeting rooms during two days, one of those first meetings, we'd get together as a team. And you'd write those goals, and uh, and it was always fun to have those goals sitting there. And we oh, could they were lofty. Out. They were very lofty. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Our year, we wanted to win every game. Yes, sir. And somebody said, uh, uh, '96 season, you must have hit all your goals. Won the national championship, uh, won the SEC, won the division." Uh, I said, "No, but we lost at FSU," <laughs> and uh, so uh, and that was one of our goals. And uh, unfortunately, we got a rematch against them, and uh, so we beat them the second time. So I guess we could say we almost hit all the goals. We wanted to win every game yeah. that year because we had a team capable of doing it. Yes, sir. It was capable. Is there is there one piece of advice maybe that comes to mind that stands out that maybe the best piece of advice you've ever received? I don't know if there's one. I, I will think of uh, one of John Wooden's quotes. I've got about 20 of his that I like to repeat uh, here, there, and the other. But one of them is... Uh, uh, don't try to be better than your opponents, but never cease to be the best that you can be. In other words, if you're playing a guy, you're three or four touchdowns favorite, and you think, well, I can be better than him right here. No, no, you're supposed to be the best you can be every time out. So we worried about ourselves, maybe what style of offense or defense they play. So we had a game plan, but we, we didn't worry about it. Uh, so much uh, their coaches or their players as we concerned ourselves with playing the best we could er every play. Well, Coach, thank you for joining us on, on mm -hmm. Portraits, and, and I couldn't have 
couldn't have even imagined a better place to start than, than right here with you. It's, it's all about the, uh, the personalities and, and, and the stories with these people. And uh, uh, you're one of my, my favorite people of all time. And not just favorite coach, but, but favorite people. Oh. And thank you for all the opportunities that you've given me over the years. OK, thank you, Batesy. Appreciate it, my man. All right, Coach. Portraits, whether it's a, a still photo or it's a, a painting the way the, the, an artist sees that person, it's about the personality that, that comes out. Spurrier, his drive is just, he's a competitor. He's, he's the ultimate competitor. That's, that's what drives him. I, I, still to this day, I think he likes to, to also remind of, hey, remember when I won this? Remember when I won that? He, it's just that competitor. He'll, uh, uh, till his dying day, he will, he will con compete. Even if he can't run out there on the football field, and, and kick a field goal to beat Auburn, he, he's competing by reminding you of, of how good he was and, and how not many people will ever even come close to what he did.